Hello, everybody. Welcome along. This is Championship 365, which is our collaboration between myself, um, the great Ben HD, and the equally great Justin Peach from the Second Tier Podcast. This uh, show is available each and every week on the Planet Sports Network. So head over there. But we're going to give you a little fun freebie down my channel today. And we're going to look at some New Year's resolutions uh, for each of the championship teams. Now, there are 24, so let's not stand on ceremony. We will <laughs> rotate around. So we're going to start with Justin and we're going to work our way down the table. So we're thinking, Justin, New Year's resolution. Um, what does a team either need to keep doing or start doing that they weren't doing or should be doing, et cetera, et cetera. You process it. How you think? And we will start with our league leaders, uh, Bournemouth. Have you got a New Year's resolution for Bournemouth, Justin? Ah, uh, yes. I thought it'd be easy going into this, actually. And now I'm thinking oh, it might be quite difficult. <laughs> um, it's, it's quite hard to come up with one for a team that are, have been very good this season. But I think with Bournemouth, I think it's just a case of um, being more consistent defensively and getting a settled back line again, because that's something that they've struggled with, that really poor run that they had. Gary Cahill's out. Um, left back situation was was wasn't well, ideal. Well, he's off to Afcon as well, Zamura. Yeah, isn't Zamura. He? Yeah. Um and obviously they've got Ethan Laird possibly coming in on loan. So it's just getting a settled back four because they're a team that I think build from the from the back essentially. Um so getting a consistent back four, they'll start to pick up points again more consistently. Not much wrong with Bournemouth though, is there? Uh, ben H D, you love talking about Blackburn. It's just a <laughs> sheer coincidence that we've ended up with you doing uh, Blackburn, but they are the form team in the division. But what's the, what's the New Year's resolution? Yeah, I think this one's fairly obvious. It's to keep hold of Ben Brereton Diaz. I think that every football fan, when you're in this sort of situation, wants to take the gamble. They could take the money. I'm sure the offers will come in. We've already seen, you know, several Premier League clubs um, mentioned in conversations with Ben Brereton for their keep hold of him and see where they end up at the end of the season. So I've got Fulham in third place. I mean, it's fairly obvious to say that they're on a bad run at the moment. And I suppose the New Year's resolution is to, to not be found out because we've seen the sort of Sheffield United example of aggressively, you know, actually not being scared of Mitrovic and Wilson, um, et cetera, et cetera. So for Fulham, we all know if they go back to that form of, I don't know, games like, games four to 16, they're going to be miles ahead of everybody else. But there was a little bit of a sense of a tail off. So I guess the, the New Year's resolution is to to not be found out and get Wilson, Mitrovic, Miss Seri as well for a, for a little while, but everybody firing again. Right. Justin, I'm interested in this one because you've got West Brom who, have they already solved their New Year's resolution with their big <laughs> signing? I, I think it remains to be seen, given how you know it might take DK a little bit of time to, to settle into West Brom. It didn't take him too long to settle in at, at Barnsley, um, but things might be different. But the obvious New Year's resolution here is to score more goals, essentially, and convert some of the chances they create. I, I feel like if they if they did that on a consistent basis, they'd be top by a mile. Um and it, that is just the one thing that has held them back this season. You look at Jordan Hugo, how wasteful he's been in front of goal. Um, they've over relied on Carl and Grant. Callum Robinson's uh, has has been consistent and then inconsistent and then consistent again. He's been up and down essentially all season. So creating chances is fine. Defensively, they're really, really good. It is literally just converting chances. So getting DK in that team is, is going to be essential. Uh, ben, what about QPR? They've ended up in fifth. They've got back-to-back -back defeats and then back-to-back -back wins. Um, there's yeah. certain things we characterise about Mark Warburton's sides that seem to have been fairly consistent um, with this one at QPR. What's the New Year's resolution here? Yeah, it might sound like a bit of a weird one, but I'm going to say try and draw a few more matches, try and turn <laughs> some of those losses into draws, because QPR are one of those teams that seem to be... Um, quite streaky really the emotions seem to go from zero to 100 you know they had those two successive losses followed up by those two successive wins if they can turn a few more of those losses into draws here and there uh get together or, or you know a really good and beaten run uh, they could start to pull away maybe um from those teams below them because it's so tight in around that part of the table at the moment that you know turning some of those losses into draws could make all the difference yeah absolutely and um hopefully willock steps up in chair's absence <laughs> What about Dieng and, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens yeah. in the goalkeeping <laughs> position with possibly Archer there. Um, Huddersfield, New Year's resolution has got to be to keep proving the likes of me wrong and probably um, 
you two guys as, as well. I had Huddersfield predicted way, way lower than they are. They're in sixth. There's there's a bit of a sense, and Ben was saying on the um on the other show about oh, when's when's the tail off? When's it when's it gonna drop off? They just keep going and keep going and keep going. They need to obviously keep, and we're talking about Sorber Thomas, Levi Colwill, um, Lewis O'Brien, sort of key of their team on the pitch. And who knows where they could finish? Look, I'm still expecting some kind of um drop off, but more power to Huddersfield, who just um I'm confounded by the fact they're up in sixth. I think that's a tremendous uh, performance by Corberon. Um, Justin, what about Middlesbrough outside the top six in seventh? It's a difficult one because Chris Wilde has been very, very good since he's been in charge. So I think New Year's resolution for them um, is to is to create more chances. And that, that probably means that they've got to add one or two players uh, in the creative department. Um, but for me, I think defensively under Wilder, they're going to be absolutely fine. They fall into the same category as West Brom in some instances where they do create a lot of chances. They just struggle to convert them. Sparar has been picking up form recently, but I still feel that they are lacking probably an extra forward. Obviously, Connolly's come in, um, but they still need another creative player to, to come in and boost those numbers just to flush out any potential of, of um, not unlocking certain games. So, yeah, creating more chances and eventually the goals will come as well. If you're right about that, Borough fans will probably be pleased because Connolly and possibly Balogun might, and they might solve that in the same way we talk mm. about DK and West Brom. Uh, ben, Stoke, and they're not in good form at the moment. And they've got this three-year tag of underachievers, haven't they? What's the what's the New Year's resolution here? Yeah, I was going to say something like get some more medical staff in the club or something. <laughs> Try and nurse these players that are currently out injured back to full fitness. Um, I don't think there's a chance that we're going to see Harry Sutar before the end of the season. But some of those other players who have been out with injuries recently, you know, maybe we'll see Nick Powell um, up his training and things like that. Players returning like that will make all the difference for Stoke um, in the running because listening to Michael O'Neill's comments recently, it doesn't seem like there's all too much room for them to properly go out in January and strengthen that team. So it's going to be, you know, reliant on those players coming back from injuries and really dependent on if they're going to be able to challenge for the top six this season. I've got Nottingham Forest in ninth. Um, Back-to-back defeats for Forest after that crazy run under Steve Cooper. And as ever with Forest, it's probably just about transfer windows and not going too mental. We've already seen, um, it's two in already, isn't it? Steve Cook and Keenan Davis. So I think the New Year's resolution, and I, I thought Chris Hooten would do this, but he didn't, it didn't work out, is to, you know, not repeat the crimes of the past and, you know, replace five players, 10 players, sometimes which they've done in uh, transfer windows and, you know, give Steve Cooper what he needs and, keep some sense of stability at the city ground. Um, Justin, Coventry, who have regressed, actually. They're, OK, they've got games in hand, but they've been fourth for a, a fair proportion of the season. They're now 10th. Uh, New Year's resolution. I think it's finding consistency in in uh, individuals. You look at um, Victor Gerkerez, uh first 10, uh, 12 games, absolutely brilliant. Not really seen him since then. Gus, Gus, Gus Hamer's struggled as well. Um, Matt Godden, he's he's blowing hot and cold. Um, they need to find consistency in those players that are hitting streaks because I feel like if they do find consistency in them and um, they peak at the right times, they will be more consistent themselves. Um, and, and as we've seen, that those players have, have dropped off, Coventry have dropped off with them. Um, so for me, it's just finding consistency in individuals and that's where they'll start to unlock more consistency as a team as well. Uh, ben, Millwall in 11th, which um, on the surface of it isn't um, terrible, but um, a bit spotty recently. And there's there's always the question with Millwall of the glass ceiling and can they go up a little bit further into um, sort of, well, let's be honest, I think they've finished eighth twice, haven't they? So, you know, you know what the next step is up from uh, eighth. Um, what, 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 do you, what do you think about um, Millwall and Rowett? Yeah, I'm going to say start to plan for life without Jed Wallace. He's out of contract at the end of the season and this Gary Rowett side has very much always been sort of built around Jed Wallace and his sort of creativity, hasn't it? So with him, um, with his current contract situation, there's been a couple of murmurs lately about, you know, Nottingham Forest being interested. I think Besiktas um, was spoken about as well. Having that forward planning to try and go about replacing him, I think will be absolutely crucial for Millwall and where they sort of end up next under Rowett. This could be the start of that, that next cycle, if you will. Yeah, so I've got Blackpool, who are 12th, and I don't know, there's a bit of a 
um, Black World, we do a Blackpool Pleasure Beach um, theme here <laughs> about steep rises up and steep rises down. And what I want to see from Blackpool is they were tremendous, weren't they, going up into the autumn before the um, COVID stuff and, okay, some injuries um, there at Blackpool. But the recent bad run, there's been a couple of wins. However, they're the sort of wins I look at and think, okay, beat Peterborough at home and they're really bad away. Um, beat Hull at home and the goalkeeper had a worldie and Hull had 16 shots or something. So I'm looking at Blackpool thinking, right, to get back on that really good run that uh, they were on, I need to see um, a bit more viable form uh, coming back, else we're going to have them pegged as, OK, they were really good and now they're not so good. And yeah, if they don't mitigate that, it will be um, bottom half, although obviously we have to say. But all teams that come up to League One, to, from League One, excuse me, to be anywhere near the top half is... Uh, very, very decent indeed. Um, one team that's not in the top half, Justin, is Sheffield United, year one parachute team in 13th. Go on. Quite quite an easy one. Uh, and it's just keep doing what you're doing under hacking bottom. Um, I think playing players in the right positions is as, as simple as it is, is helping them because they're getting the best out of the individuals in those positions. Keeping hold of Gibbs White is going to be important. We've seen a lot of recalls this window already, especially from Wolves. So there might be a danger there that Wolves might consider recalling Gibbs White. I feel like if they do recall Gibbs White, Sheffield United are going to struggle. Um, so actually, in that in that case, it's making sure they have a plan B as well in case Gibbs White does get recalled. So playing, uh, keeping, keeping doing what you're doing um, under hacking bottom and having a plan B uh, if Gibbs White has to go back to Wolves. How long during this rotation, Ben, did you realise that you were going to fall on Preston? <laughs> yeah, just 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 click there. I was like, yes, come on. <laughs> the, u- the universe has given Ben HD Preston, so it will definitely give Justin Derby. We'll fix it. Um, <laughs> we'll fix it that way. But uh, talk to us about Preston. Two for two for Ryan Lowe, but with a four week gap or something in between, right? Yeah, really impressive. I like the way we're going under Ryan Lowe. I think for our New Year's resolution, I'd say to try and clear out the deadwood. I think this is something that we probably failed to do in the summer transfer window. And a couple of previous windows of sort of average recruitment has sort of caught up to us. Um, With the 25-man squad and things like that, I think we've got like 28 or 29 contracted pros at the moment. So there seems to be a lot of people in the squad not doing all too much at the moment. And we are in a situation where we need to get rid um, of some of those players before we go ahead and seriously strengthen the squad. So look to offload a few of those players in January and then, you know, give Ryan Lowe a real good crack of the whip heading into next season. So I've got Bristol City in 15th and there's this horrible word of like transition, isn't there? And um, with the previous CEO going and then the failed Dean Holden experiment and maybe a bit of a tailing off and then Pearson coming in, squad churn and turnover. It feels like what Bristol City need more than anything is some sense of club stability, which they're working towards, I can see, um, although those financial results recently aren't what you want to hear in terms of um, stability. And then surely that then transmits itself onto the pitch because there's been periods this season uh, where, you know, they were the best team away in the league for six games. And then it's got 10 points in four at home. And then it goes completely the other way. And I, I think someone like Andy Vyman that sums up Bristol City at the moment because he, he scored three once and two, four times, I think, um, and one once. So it's, it's a bit feast nor famine. And I think that, general sense of stability um, just around the whole club uh, will get them trending back where they were, which was, a, frankly, an upwardly mobile top 10 team chasing for the playoffs. And in eighteen nineteen, in one of the hardest championship seasons we've seen, they missed out. So, um, yeah, that would be my take on Bristol City. Um, Justin, what about Luton New Year's resolutions? Quite low in 16th, but they've got a load of games to hand. Yeah, they've, they've been one of the victims of the postponements massively because they're a team for me that aren't far away from being a playoff side. It's just fine-tuning elements. They can obviously score more goals, uh, convert more chances because they create a shed load of, of, of really good goal-scoring chances. I think they scored the most um, out of the top four leagues in the uh, in England or in the UK, sorry, um, when it comes to scoring in the six-yard box. So they are very good at getting in the right areas. But for me, I think it's just tightening up defensively. I think because they create a lot of chances, they are a little bit more open. But if they tighten up defensively, you look at how many goals they've conceded, 27, still quite relatively high. But if they tighten up, I think they can really start to bridge that gap between being a mid-table side and a top 16. 
And we were just talking about stability, Justin. Five and a half year contract for um, Nathan Jones already announced. So we, we have to give them some some kind of props in, in, in that regard when we see how other championship teams maybe <laughs> do or don't operate. Uh, ben, what about Swansea? It's really interesting because they're 17 from a couple of months ago. We were really excited about Martin Ball and a top 10 team and Piro and Patterson and three defeats and some postponements. And yeah, it looks a bit different now. Yeah, it seems like there probably still will be some ups and downs to come for Swansea for the rest of the season. I think for the New Year's resolution, do everything you can to keep hold of Joel Perot. I think he's scored something like 40-something percent of their goals so far this season. Him and Jamie Patterson um, have been where all the goals have been coming from so far. So carry on building the squad around him and maybe try getting some low knees, you know, with Ethan Laird going out and things like that. Absolutely. Um <laughs> I feel a bit deja vu because I've just jumped from Bristol City to Birmingham. <laughs> but it, it feels like all the things I said about Bristol City in terms of things needing a sort out is is the same at, at Birmingham, I think. And um, yeah, a bit, bit of a sense that managers at the end of their tethers at, at both clubs, po- possibly they're not their tenures, they're, they're tethers, their own, um, their own kind of patience levels. It feels like Lee Bowyer a couple of times already this season has been right. We're going to have a sort out. I'm going to change this system and these players are going in and these players are going out. And like you said about recalls, Justin, um, Deion Sanderson out, but um, Ted and Mengi has come in already. Um, God, they miss Chong, don't they? So maybe a New Year's resolution would be, can I get him back? I don't know about the injury or um, certainly replace that role because they haven't been the same. I don't want to go into, they never replaced Vieira mode, but they certainly haven't been the same um, since he's been out. Uh, Justin Hull City. Uh, yeah, difficult one because they're obviously getting the takeover sorted. I feel like they can't really uh, get going until that takeover is done because they they clearly need a couple more players in January. Um, they're not going to do that until this takeover is ratified uh, and also sorting the long-term future out of Grant, Grant McCann because there's still, even with that good run of form, there's still a massive amount of uncertainty as to whether or not he's going to stay or go because his championship record, although improved slightly of late, still isn't great. So ensuring what the long-term plan um, is for the, the new hall owners and and getting the short-term fixed very quickly as well, I think they're, those two uh, are the priorities. Uh, ben, Cardiff uh, with Steve Morrison, um, out of the bottom four, but still uh, 20th place. Yeah, a bit of a dodgy position at the moment. I'm going to say try and play the loan market in January. I think the budget's probably not there for Cardiff at the moment to go and you know spend anything silly in the January window, but they are in a bit of a precarious position at the moment with Peterborough having that game in hand and then being just four points off the relegation zone. Ryan Giles being recalled seems like a real hammer blow for that Cardiff side, you know, nine assists um, in that team this season. So try their best to replace a little bit of that creativity with some incoming loans. Nine assists. He could have been on for some kind of record if it rolled that out over the second half. Graham's Doran, Graham Doran's esque season possibly <laughs> coming up. Um, although, yeah, maybe, maybe not quite Ben Rama style of assists. But yeah, what are you going to do? Um, Reading, God, in twenty first, six point um, deduction, um, a big COVID hold. John Swift returns. Still Lucas Zhao. Still Maite. Still Ijaria. Both of the fullbacks are going to AFCON as well. So I think for me, it's all about mitigating absences and, you know, being as viable as you can without those key players. Hopefully Swift um, stays fit, but they've just got to get through with no fullbacks and try and um, in the absence. I know Aziz came back, didn't he, in the last game, but in the absence of, that's a lot of quality, isn't it, to to be missing. So I, I guess with Reading, it's just um, absentee, um, management. Um, oh, here's a nice, nice hard one for you, Justin uh, Peterborough. God, yeah, whatever am I going to choose? Um, <laughs> I think it's pick up more points away from home. Uh, simple as that. If they've only won one game, lost 11 games, conceded 33 goals away from home, they are scary statistics for any team. Um, and obviously with Peterborough having just come up, it was always going to be difficult, but they've yet to convince me that they are capable of staying in a championship. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pick up more points away from home. I mean, even if they're just scraping draws, they need to stop losing games because their home form's not too bad. Lower mid table could improve, but it's the away form that is really, really make uh, well pushing them to uh, relegation essentially. Hundred um, percent, Ben. I'd, you got you got a fair choice here with poor old Barnsley. It's not been good this season. No, I feel like they'll have about. 
50 New Year's resolutions. <laughs> um, I don't know. I was going to say do the exact opposite of what you've been doing in the first half of the season, really. <laughs> um, I think the mindset of Barnsley now just has to be try to prove people wrong in the second half of the season. I think we've sort of got to this point where we're now halfway through. Everyone's sort of resigned to the fact that you know, we've all sort of wrote Barnsley off. So they have to go into this second half of the season now with that mindset of trying to prove people wrong and pick out some quality from somewhere because, uh, yeah, at the moment, they just seem so far off it. 100%. And being the gentleman I am, I will defer Derby County to the man on my, well, I don't know, on, on my right as you're looking. Now, Justin, Derby County. Uh, I guess there are, there are two uh, resolutions here. On the pitch, it's keep doing what you're doing. Because you're doing exactly what Ben said Barnsley need to do is proving people wrong. Um, Derby are doing just that. Off the pitch, it's it's get a takeover sorted. Because I feel like, it, uh, same with Hull, um, as soon as that takeover is sorted, that will really give Derby a, um, a sense of where they're at in terms of can they avoid relegation um, or, or at least have a real serious attempt because it's still, from my, view, from my point of view, a pipe dream at the minute because they need to get through January of, uh, keeping their squad intact and they still need a couple more players in my opinion so yeah uh off the pitch get it get it uh, sorry yeah off the pitch get it sorted on the pitch keep doing what you're doing brilliant stuff guys well we've rattled through 24 new year's resolutions for 24 championship clubs and your new year's resolution should be to come and see us every single week on championship 365 this collaboration um we've been brought together by Football 365, but we do actually like each other and we do talk every week and split it up into three shows. So do head over to the Planet Sport Network. Um, ben, do you want to just give a quick plug for your channel? I'm sure most of my viewers will be um, uh, aware of what you do, but what can what can people find over at the Ben HD YouTube channel? Yeah, as always, Ben HD for everything championship, really, into January now. So a lot of sort of things surrounding transfers, who teams are looking at and things like that. So uh, yeah, loads going on in the championship at the moment. Um, and Justin, direct people to the Second Tier Podcast? Yeah, it's at Second Tier Pod, Twitter, uh, Instagram, YouTube, yeah, all at Second Tier Pod. Um, with the, the FA Cup coming up, we've got a few um, mid-season predictions coming up, so it'll be good to keep an eye on them. And stick to your New Year's resolutions, everybody. A friend of mine was in Oldborough within 12 hours eating fish and chips when he said he was going on a diet. So uh, we'll see how these teams go. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Do check out the um, the um, collaboration that we do, uh, Championship 365. Um, it, it, is, it is something a little bit different than all of our channels because we seem to get a different angle just mm. by the conversation than what, but certainly from my point of view, I do um, a few different ideas come up than come down my channel. So um, well worth, um, I think, uh, coming and seeing this lovely thought experiment and get your comments in on anything the boys have said in terms of um, New Year's resolutions. And of course, if you think they're wrong, then for God's sake, tell us what your New Year's resolutions are for your club this season. Right. Thank you, everybody, for watching and come and see us over on the Plant Sport Network for Championship 365.